It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this video, we're gonna go over create with code basic gameplay. So this is what we're working on today. Go ahead and open that up. In this unit, you will program a top-down game with an objective of throwing food to hungry animals who are stampeding towards you before they can run past. In order to do this, you will become much more familiar with some of the most important programming and Unity concepts, including if-then statements, random value generations, arrays, collision detection, prefabs, and instantiation. In completing this unit, you will learn how to program a basic game with the ability to launch projectiles and maneuver the player to keep the game alive. I'm going to show you the introduction. You can see, make sure you're using 2018.4. Congratulations. If you're watching this video, it means you've made it all the way through unit one and are ready to take your skills to the next level. In this unit, we will create a much more interactive top-down prototype where the player has to throw food to hungry animals who are stampeding towards them. And if you've ever had to face down a herd of charging moose with nothing in your hand but a slice of pizza, you'll know that's going to be pretty exhilarating. If you think about our first prototype, it wasn't really a game. The player was the only object that could move, so they could just take their time in this completely predictable environment. There was no real objective, excitement, or sense of urgency. In most games and interactive experiences though, there are non-player enemies or obstacles outside of the player's control that force the player to respond. In order to respond, the player will usually have some ability like an attack or defense. And more often than not, there is also some element of randomness so that the experience is more exciting and unpredictable. All of these things are elements of basic gameplay. And that's exactly what we're learning to program in this prototype. Non-player animals will spawn at random locations, and it's up to the player to use their food launching ability to feed those animals. Even though we are programming one particular type of game in this unit, you'd be amazed at how far these skills will take you. Just about every great classic game ever made draws on these fundamental ingredients of basic gameplay. So let's start creating. All right, so obviously you're gonna make mark step as complete, and then you can go on to part two. I'm already, so I'm just gonna click here on lesson 2.1. Again, I will show you the start of this, and then you can continue down here. You'll begin this unit by creating a new project for your second prototype and getting basic player movement working. You'll first choose the character you will like, which types of animals you will like to interact with, and which food you would like to feed those animals. You will give the player basic side-to-side -side movement, just like you did in prototype one, but then you will use if-then statements to keep the player in bounds. You can see here are the materials that you're going to need. I'm just gonna click on direct download and go ahead and save it. All right, so let's watch the introduction. This prototype is all about feeding hungry animals. So the first big decision to make is what kind of animals you want to feed and what you want to feed them. Do you want to feed an apple to a chicken? Do you want to feed a steak to a dog? Want to feed some pizza to a moose? All of that and more is possible. But if we want to be able to chase all of these animals to feed them, the player is going to need some basic movement. So by the end of this lesson, you'll have a player, some food, and some animals in the scene, with the ability to move the player left and right. Moving the player left and right will be easy. We'll use the same technique we did in the driving simulator to move the car. Here's the twist though. Unlike that car, which we could drive off the edge, we don't want the player to be able to leave the edge of this screen. So to prevent this from happening, we'll use something called an if statement. 
An if statement is a pretty straightforward concept. If some condition is met, then do something. In our project, if the player's position is too far to the left, then we'll stop them. If the player's position is too far to the right, then we'll stop them there too. If statements are one of the most important tools for adding logic to your projects. So to make all that happen, I'll see you in Unity. So again, mark your step as complete. Create a new project for prototype two. This is the first thing we need to do. You should watch the video, then follow these steps to do them. I'm not gonna watch the video in this instance, but you should watch the video, then do these. So let's go ahead and start this. So open Uni Hub, create a new project and prototype two in your course directory. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna click, make sure that you select 2018.4.28 because that is required. I'm simply gonna call this prototype two and create it. All right, so click on the link to access prototype two starter files, then import them. I just save those. So I actually could just right click, import new package, custom package. You can see that's the location. I need to unzip it first. Here's that file. I'm just gonna double click on it on my Mac to unzip it. So now you can see I have this and that package. And I'm just gonna click on that. I do want to import all these files. So I'm gonna go ahead and do import. So you can see now I have this course library with animals, foods, all these things and in my scenes, I have a prototype two and a sample scene. I'm probably gonna delete sample scene. Let's go through the instructions. Open the prototype two scene and delete the sample scene without saving it. So I'm going to double click on prototype two and I'm going to right click on sample scene and delete it and delete. So this is my little scene that we're going to build this on. Come back here the type right of uni enter change the layout from default to your custom layout I already have my custom layout you can see layout this is the default one this is my layout where I have both here and I have everything kind of set up like I want it obviously go ahead and mark complete with that I'm going to end this video make sure you watch the video first and then follow these steps and you will obviously go through the rest of these. Go ahead and get started. Once you complete this assignment, don't forget to save it and then turn it into your teacher.